What is going on, guys? My name is Seas, and welcome to Feeds Mindset, episode number 30 with the wonderful lady, Jojo. Jojo, welcome in. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing well. I appreciate you coming on. Um, you have just recently got back from a, a pretty lengthy break. Is that right? Yeah, I uh, took a little break. It was supposed to be very short. I went on like a little vacation and then did not really come back as planned. <laughs> Um, I did write on Twitter about it that I was a little burnt out. Um, my job's a little crazy, life gets a little crazy, and I was like, I don't even want to stream at all, or like, I cannot be entertaining for someone right now. Yeah. So I was like, let me take a little break, and I come back when I'm ready, because no one wants to watch a miserable person on the screen. Yeah, no, I definitely understand. I mean, breaks are always good, and, and I feel like that's something that a lot of people don't really adapt into their lifestyle. A lot of people feel like they do owe the internet stuff, when in turn they mm. don't really owe anybody anything. And it's not really at like being rude at the fact, but it's just like you said. I mean, like if you're down and you're going through stuff and you need a longer break than what you're giving yourself, like you mm. want to come back and be the best you you can be for your stream. Um, so I feel like if a lot of people would just take a little bit longer of a break than what they normally did, I feel like people just like, they're gone for a couple of days and they're like, Oh, I'm good now. And then like two or yeah. three days later, like they post their same soppy tweet saying I'm going through stuff. Yeah, exactly. And I see that a lot. Um, I was actually on Twitter the other day and I saw someone post like, they're like, Oh, I'm deleting everything. Like <laughs> I'm unfollowing you guys. Like I'm done streaming. And then it was like the next day or so they're like stream tonight 9 p.m <laughs> i was like wait what and then like uh, that's great that they were back and then like the next week they're like i'm deactivating i was like what's <laughs> <laughs> going on I swear. like pick one i've seen and that was like i feel like the call of duty scene was was the craziest for that especially kind of like early on cod mm -hmm. so many times kids would be like oh like i'm gonna kill it in this car like you guys aren't prepared and then like a week later like they're like, this game's dog shit. I'm leaving. All you guys fucking suck. Yeah. And they just fucking dip. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, it, it's, so it's funny. Honestly. Before we get started, um, one thing I always bring up at the beginning of all my podcasts, um, my podcast really revolves around a lot about mental health, raising that awareness, networking, getting out there, getting out of your comfort zone. Um, mm. So I always bring up kind of the you know, relationship, friendship level that I have with any guest on. Um, me and you, I wouldn't say we're complete strangers. We have played uh, quite a couple games of Valorant before you left, but we're definitely not like good friends. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I'd bring that up, like I said, because a lot of people struggle with, with making those connections. Even I struggled. I was telling you this before I started. That was the only reason why I never done this podcast before was because I didn't know how I was going to message, what questions I would ask, how they would feel uh, mm -hmm. me having on, um, and I just, you know, I just woke up one day and I was like, my motivation is, you know, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. And it's like, that's kind of like the the general way that you could usually feel about it. But I don't know. There's just, there's something about just having a mindset of not, not really like, not in the regard, not in the regard where other people like care, but at the same time, like when you want to reach out, you can't be upset if they say no and I feel like that's something like a lot of people struggle with is like, what if they say no, like my whole life's going to fall apart. And it's like, no, it's not. And I struggle with, I struggle with that same thing. I had the mm -hmm. same excuses and it's like, I can't really give an excuse for it. But when I look at like now reaching out to Jojo versus like before talking to you, um, I like, I don't know like why I wouldn't do that, you know, back then, like I, I can't really explain it. Yeah. Um, I think about that a lot too, because especially like this day and age in like social media, like you can, your job can literally be making TikToks of yourself getting dressed in the morning. Like, and people are afraid to just like try and like look dumb or like think about like what other people are going to think about them. And I, of course I do too. Like everybody does when your face is on a camera and people are watching you, like they're looking at everything you're doing, everything you're saying. But like, you sorry <laughs> you <fine>. don't <laughs> you don't know like what you can do or who's gonna like your your content until you just try it like we've all sat in front of a camera on a stream with zero viewers before with no one in the chat like and it is 
demotivating. Like, it's, you're like, why, why am I even doing this every single day for no reason? But, like, it only takes one day or one connection or this and that to, like, change, really. And even if it's not, like, you know, a thousand viewers in a day, because that's unrealistic. But, like, two or three viewers is, like, way such an achievement when you started at zero. Yeah. And it's just, you just have to try. I, that's yeah. my only I thing is, like... That's, that's a really big pet peeve of mine, too. Like, a lot of people, you know, well, they'll have that happen. They'll have that creator that, that highlights their career and really gets them going. And obviously, they should get a lot of credibility for that happening. But that's my biggest pet peeve is a lot of people will be like, oh, man, like, if it wasn't for you, like, I would be nowheres right now. And it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, they helped you get where you want to be, and that's amazing. But, like, you have to be proud of yourself, you know, like, because yeah, if you like didn't you... reach out and start that, you would never yeah. be you did the something to, you know, get their attention or pull them in or whatever it was that made them want to be like, hey, you know, this person's really cool or they do this content or whatever. And like, you know, they they didn't, they gave you those followers or they gave you this and that or guided you to them or the other way around. But like you are doing something right that kept them there. Yeah. So... Yeah, and I think that's um, off of, uh, you know, one of my favorite quotes that I've seen recently, um, oddly enough, on Kick, um, where I do stream, which if you don't stream on Kick, there's nothing wrong with that. But uh, Eddie had made a tweet or a quote saying some of the biggest creators haven't even went live for the first time yet. And like, I just think that, you know, it just speaks volumes. There's a lot of mm -hmm. people that have so much talent and that could be a good creator and that could surpass all these big ones in just a matter of a couple months if they would just do it and get out of their, you know, little headspace that they're in and it would make mm -hmm. a drastic change. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it just takes a, a little courage sometimes or, you know, going on and like seeing someone that really inspires you and kind of, taking their lead and be like, oh, I like what this person does. Maybe I can do it. And, you know, that person is like, hmm, do you know, they inspired me to go live one day. And here we are. Yeah. Yeah. It, it could definitely make a huge change. Um, so, yeah. So, you know, before we kind of get into the background of my normal questions, I always like to, you know, usually start out. Um, kind of getting to know, you know, a perspective of, you know, who JoJo is as of current day for anybody that's your community that's watching my community or just random people that just stumbled upon watching this. Uh, who would mm. you say is JoJo as of current day? So, obviously, I'm JoJo or my gamer tag or persona is JoJo Chanel. Um, I am mostly, you know, first person shooter gamer. I have played them my entire life. They are like my favorite thing. Um, I love any kind of like ranked play, which is obviously why I play mm -hmm. Call of Duty and Valorant. And um, I actually just started playing Valorant because of like Aaron and quality mm -hmm. and all of them. I was like, I want to play with you guys and you won't play Call of Duty with me. So I'm playing Valorant <laughs> and I did it as like a, um, like a, Fine, I'll do it. Yeah. Not like because I want to, but I actually ended up loving the game, and now I'm addicted to it. But um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I feel like I'm not like the greatest ever at games, but I love them, and I love meeting new people um, and playing with them, and then getting to know like people from all over the world and hearing about their lives. And I just like love that, and I. Love just hanging out and playing games and I don't know. That's yeah. that's uh Yeah, what I, I mean I, I definitely understand. I mean, you know, at the end of the day I think, you know, when I was talking to you before I started this podcast, clearly, you know, I don't have a lot to offer. Like there's a lot more places that I wanna be, goals that I mm -hmm. wanna hit and stuff, but you know, on the context of you saying, you know, you just want to meet people and connect with them and learn about all these brand new people. I mean, just take me and you, for instance. You know, I popped in one day as a viewer in your stream, just chatting, trying to find new people, found you. We mm -hmm. ended up playing together, had a great time. Then you took a break and ditched me for like a month and a half. 
<laughs> and then he came back and, you know, now we're on this podcast. And it's like, if we would have never made that connection and never had that conversation, mm-hmm. we would probably wouldn't even be sitting here today. And I think that's a, a really important factor that a lot of people kind of miss. And they, a lot of people just, just want to see the results. They don't want to work for the results. Yeah, absolutely. And I was actually very surprised when you asked me to do the podcast. <laughs> and I was like, I'm just like nobody. <laughs> and I was like, that's, I was like, I don't know what I have to offer, but I would, I, I'm so like honored and happy that you, you would ask me to do this. Oh, of course. And... I mean, God, sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I appreciate your time being here. I mean, it, it does mean a lot. And, you know, we, we all have to start from somewhere. Like I said, I'm clearly nowhere's where. I want to be, and I can offer a lot myself, but you know, it's just like I said, you know, when we was having our conversation before this, I mean, there's Mm -hmm. so much negativity in this space. And so, I mean, if, if I can do something that makes a creator that thinks nothing of themselves or they think they're a smaller creator, or maybe they think they're a bigger creator and that they should have more options and connections and what they do. I mean, if I can do something to change their day, or even if me and you could just have a conversation where somebody's listening and and it changes Mm -hmm. their day, I mean, that's, I would do it all the time. I mean, that's that's my initial goal. I mean, just like I told you before, like the numbers and being full time and all that stuff, like it'll get there when it gets there. Like God's got a yeah. plan. But at the Absolutely. same time, like during that process, it's it's my duty to make sure that I blow up for the right reasons. I don't want to be known for drama and, and trending topics yeah. and these crazy tweets. Absolutely. I, I want to be known for somebody that, will do what barely any friend in this community would do that you think you have and sit down for mm-hmm. an hour and talk about who you are and connect with you. And it's, it's just so important. And uh, I, I know that I do make a difference in an impact, but at the same time, like you guys being a part of this also makes a huge impact for me. So it's just kind of, it's just like a win-win scenario, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I like that too, because sometimes like you can't really get to know people but, like, yes, you get to know, like, the personality and their stuff through, like, watching their streams or, like, gaming with them. But there's always, like, something else that's going on that you're focusing on. Mm-hmm. Especially, like, when you play, like, Call of Duty or, like, Valorant, like, the fast-paced, like, you gotta pay attention games. Where, like, when you do something like this and, like, you can actually sit down and, like, have the time to, like, actually, like, get to know someone and get to know, um, you know, their ideas about this or, like, how they deal with that or you know how they started streaming how they got their name like just like the small stuff which is pretty cool yeah yeah definitely i understand so yeah so let's go ahead and, and kind of get into it so obviously you know we know that you play cod and, and you're mm-hmm. i wouldn't say recently got into valorant but you know you're still dipping your toes in it and learning here and there you know just like yeah. all of us um so you know we have this current love of gaming but let's go you know back in time and let's talk about how you got into gaming in general before the streaming before mm-hmm. jojo chanel and before all that in your community just gaming in general how did that start for you so i literally been gaming my entire life um i have a twin brother and basically like whatever he says goes and <laughs> he's oh like always loved video games so he was like i just did whatever he wanted to do so <laughs> i would say probably like We've owned every single game system, like, down to, like, N64, (laughs) like, craziness. Like, I remember, like, we would wake up in the morning, you know, like, Saturday morning, play um, Mario Kart, friggin', um, there's this Hey You Pikachu game that, like, you had to plug in, like, a microphone and talk to Pikachu, (laughs) and he would, like, he would, like, do stuff, but, you know, like, Nintendo 64, love her, she was great, but it was not ready for voice commands, man, (laughs) so we would be sitting there just, like, yelling at this freaking Pikachu, and uh, I would just be like, I'm not playing this game, like, it just doesn't even, there's no point, but... Oh, I loved the N64. It was so fun. And then we have played, like, I had, like, every single kind of, like, Game Boy, like, all the way up to, like, the, um... Advance. I don't know, what is it, like... Yeah, like, Advance, the Color, um, the one that... Uh, what is that one called? Uh, Nintendo DS, like, um, all DSL. those. Yeah, all of those. Um, I had, like, 
on the Game Boy Advance before it was like backlit, you know, like those yeah. old days. Um, we would play it. We you would plug in like the lamp on top of it, <laughs> and like you would have like the like a flashlight, oh, so you could God. like play in the car and like play at night when you're not supposed to. And then your mom comes in and she yells at you for playing. But um, <laughs> yeah, like we have played so many. Like my brother would be like, "Hey, let's hang out," and us hanging out is me watching him yeah. play through like <laughs> um, Kingdom Hearts or something. So basically my entire life and then i would say my first shooter game was years of war and i will stand by that is the best game on this earth if i could play one game for the rest of my life it would be that game um and then that's kind of like what like really got me into like shooters and like then i played like halo and um you know kept played all the cods and here I am, still playing Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so to to kind of, before we kind of touch base on, on some of the topics you just talked about, you know, going back, um, you know, to the to the Game Boy, you know, times, mm. I mean, that was insane. I mean, being able to be a kid and you would, it would be like, it'd be like 10 o'clock in the morning and I would be sitting in like the gap of the shadow of the door where the light would hit the top and the yeah. dark would hit the bottom <laughs> and I'd be sitting there and I'd be like trying to like fight like one of the good battles in Pokemon and be fucking like moving the shit side to side yeah. so I could see and mm-hmm. um, God, it was awful. And I, and I remember one of the first times that really opened my eyes. So I, I played, you know, Nintendo 64 and stuff. Um, something that my brother and sister that we would always do is that every weekend we would play the the Pokemon battles, the Pokemon League or whatever it's called on there. And we yeah, would play yeah, the mini yeah. games. And we yeah. had this $5 championship belt from Dollar Tree at the time. Oh and my we gosh, would play I for it every single weekend. We would play for it. We would also play Mario Kart 2 um, a little bit mm. here and there. But Pokemon, the mini games was more what we did play. Yeah. It was just fun for I us. I remember that one. And we played it every single week. And we, whoever would win would keep the title. We would like tape it on our wall in our oh room. Oh my gosh, and then, that's uh, amazing. And then when we would come home from school Friday, that's what we would be excited to be like, oh, like I'm going to, uh-huh. you know, like we didn't curse or anything. I'm getting like, the belt. I'm going to kick yeah. your booty. Like you're going to be done for. <laughs> like you're out of it. That is and, amazing. Uh, it was so funny. But I remember... I, you know, cause my, I come from, you know, a, a low income family. Like we didn't really have, you know, much to, to offer. Mm-hmm. So I didn't get a chance to experience a lot of things, but I remember <laughs> there was this, uh, there was this guy, um, his name was always, his name was Swab. I don't know why they called him Swab, but that was his like name that everybody would call him. And every okay. day he was just kind of the kid that teachers would ignore. I don't know why he just had a desk in the back left corner and he just kind of got to do his own thing. And so every time at recess or something, he would always bring a 3DS with him and he had Zelda on it. And one day I got to play him. I was like, yo, I was like, that looks sick. Like, can I play it? And that was mm. my first time I got to experience like a top and bottom screen of like the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, this is like, this is sick. And I stole it for Crazy, like three yeah. hours. And he was like, can I have it back? And I was like, I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I, it's, not, it's mine now. Sorry. Yeah, but I was like, oh, man, I, I guess... I guess kind of one of the first questions I could ask, you know, before we kind of touch base on on the current day version of gaming and streaming and stuff, do you feel like gaming doesn't have that feeling anymore? Like you did, you know, back when we was kids? Like, do you kind of, do you find um, it hard to get used to games and enjoy actually playing games? Not really. I I feel like I've played so many different kinds of games and styles and like different um the words not software but like devices Mm -hmm. like i like playing all different kinds of stuff now which is good i feel like too because some people only like certain styles of games and which is totally fine um but i like I I guess maybe because I played so many different kinds growing up, I'm, like, way more open to, like, trying different games now, which is, like, you know, why I was, like, oh, I'll just play Valorant, even though it's mouse and keyboard. I have a vendetta against mouse and keyboard because yeah. <laughs> I'm bad at it. <laughs> but um, I, I don't know. I think I like it. I like that all, there's so many styles of games and different stuff that you can play where, like, someone... That says like they don't like video games. I'm like, how do you not like video games? Like yeah. you could play 
Nintendogs. You could just have a cute dog, like, that you take <laughs> care of. How could you not like that? And if you don't like that, then there's probably one that you can have cats if you want cats. And there's probably, like, a reptile version. Like, there's, it's so crazy. There's so many games out there. Like, I know there's one for everybody. And it's funny, too, because my boyfriend, he grew up, like, playing all kinds of games like mm. same like way i did like when we first um got together we played every single call of duty campaign in a row starting from like the first one to like the newest one and now he like never plays video games <laughs> like he's like i'm just not into it like i asked him Dang. like come on like come play call of duty with me he's like no but he loves guitar hero and he <laughs> is crazy at it like he plays on um like six times speed like <laughs> insane like he and then like when clone hero came out he like downloaded it on his um computer so like yeah. now he plays that pretty often but like even for someone that like doesn't like video games or whatever like there's something out there yeah. I know there is. Yeah, there definitely is. And Guitar Hero, I, I really think, was something... I, I wouldn't really say, like, revolutionized, because gaming was still mm -hmm. really great, but that definitely added a lot of spice yeah. to gaming, for sure. Um, and, I mean, still, to this day, there's still tons of people playing Guitar Hero and hitting mm -hmm. their, you know, PRs and stuff and doing really well and trying to hit these goals. And still people that go for, like, the Guinness World Record of, like, you know, the yeah. best through the fire and flames, you know, they can do... <laughs> You know, yes. and it's it's insane, but it's, exactly. it's also wholesome. You know, is because like mm. you you'll have those people that'll come in and be like, oh, like this game is old. It's from, like why are you still playing it? Blah blah blah. But it's like to see if you tap into a stream where you know that game's been out forever, and you know they've been playing it for a while, and you tap into their stream, and the first thing you see is them smiling, focused on the game playing. Like mm -hmm. it's just it's something you can't buy. Yeah, absolutely. Especially a game like Guitar Hero, man. Yeah. It was <laughs> have you ever did you um have a have you ever played do you remember the guitar hero for nintendo ds and they had like the little handheld uh, I, I never i never played it but i don't know what you're talking about yeah you would like connect it on the side or something yeah you'd use your fingers i had that game i was addicted to it <laughs> like crazy and it's really funny because i was actually just talking about this with my boyfriend the other day he um is left-handed so hmm. they didn't have like a, a, like a lefty switch he was like i could never play it because i it was so bad because i couldn't play it like on my other hand and i was like oh that's kind of sad because it was so fun <laughs> you should have been mean like you should just learn how to be right-handed i don't see what the big deal is honestly <laughs> honestly yeah i mean like, that's that's actually crazy though. i mean the the fact that he can do guitar hero left-handed you know on those difficulty stuff it's it's crazy. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's something us right-handed people will never understand. <laughs> yeah, for real. But it, yeah, it's so and wild. That was going to kind of lead up when he was talking about Gears of War and stuff. That was kind of going to lead into the question that I usually do ask, um, you mm -hmm. know, which you kind of already answered, but I always ask, you know, was there a game that kind of highlighted it for you that really, you know, changed your mindset and be like, if this game can make me happy, what can I do for other people and stuff? And, and Gears of War, was mm -hmm. that for you? Yeah, I just remember playing that game, and it would be, like, me and my brother, uh, my older sister, and we would, like, get on. And I think that was one of the first games that was, like, a multiplayer game mm -hmm. that I played. And mind you, I was probably, like, 13 or something. Like, wow. definitely really young, um, like, when it came out, and, like, grown men are also playing the game with me. <laughs> And it would be, it would just be so funny because I would like be I was good at it and like my sister is on the headset and my brother's like you're being getting beaten by like a thirteen year old <laughs> girl like you're a grown man and I just thought that was like the funniest thing, um, but yeah definitely Gears of War is like my first game that I was like I love like this style and made me try more um, you know shooter games and. Yeah. That so kind we, of stuff. So we talked a little bit about your your competitive edge that you have and stuff playing games and, and that kind of being a highlight for you. So would you say that that was a good adaptation for you? I mean, being playing Gears of War as just a little kid and then kind of slowly come to the realization that the people that you're playing with is people that have mortgages and full-time jobs and kids <laughs> and stuff and you're doing better than them. Did that kind of help you get into COD and Valorant and be like, 
Yeah. If I could do that as a kid, like imagine like, like look at me now, like, you know, like, come on. Um, definitely. I think so. Um, especially also like being a girl or like, it was cool because I mean, now there's way more girls and or Mm -hmm. women, whatever, who do play video games and it's like way more accepted, not accepted, but you know, normal, I guess you could say, or like, you know, 10, 15 years ago, it, like, wasn't, and Mm. I just thought, I was, like, I want to be, like, that person, like, the girl that's, like, good at, you know, I want to invade, like, the space, and, um, you know, I didn't, not to be, like, oh, like, I want the attention from guys Mm. and say that I play video games, like, it wasn't even about that, it was, like, saying that I, girls can play video games, and they can be good at it, too, and, you know, kind of break like the stigma that like was, you know, back then. Yeah, definitely. And still and, is and, a little bit now. Yeah, definitely. And and we'll touch topic back on that a, a little bit more mm-hmm. um, when we kind of get closer to, to some of these other questions. But I, I definitely fully agree. And I think that's I think that's really the main part is anybody that has issues with that and backlash is usually just ones that's upset because they're not where they mm-hmm. want to be or they're upset because they're not Absolutely. skilled or this or that and the third or whatever. Um, yeah. And it's it's all just mumbo jumbo. It's so stupid. Um, but before mm-hmm. we kind of get to those topics, obviously we talked about gaming and we talked about Gears of War kind of being something that, you know, set the tone for you. Um, so let's kind of start getting into streaming now. I mean, how did you get into streaming? Was it a friend? Did you just randomly stumble upon it? Did you have free time? I mean, how did that play out for you? So um, I started streaming in like 2020 when like everything shut down. So mm-hmm. I... Um, I was working at a restaurant. I'm a bartender. I still am. So obviously the restaurants were closed. Mm-hmm. I had nothing to do. And, uh, this was when the first like war zone came out and, um, I literally was just like playing every single day and it was like me and my buddies and my brother actually started it all. Thank God for him. <laughs> he, um, he would s- stream very like little like here and there and he's like you should just start streaming like you know he was like it was funny the way he said it he was like you're a girl you could just stream and then you have followers i was like i don't think it works like that but thank you and um he was like no he was like just try it like you know like you already play you might as well just like stream it and just do the same thing and i was like okay like Sure, and I didn't have a PC yet at the time. I um had I was playing on my PlayStation, but you know, 2020, I got lucky. Like, had like the stimulus checks, like had all that stuff. Um, I was living at home still, so I was like, all right, I'm just gonna buy a PC. So <laughs> I bought one, set all, set everything up, um, and then just like started streaming one day and i was like i'm already playing might as well stream and then uh i mean i did watch um you know like some like the big streamers too like at the time like i would mm-hmm. watch like you know tim and like nick and like nick merrick's and all that um so like i did like it and i was kind of like in the scene but like after i started actually streaming um I was like, wow, this is way more work than I thought it was going to yeah. be. <laughs> but, but um, yeah, that's kind of like how it started. And like my um, my brother is like, if if he wasn't my brother, I probably would never have gotten into like video games or streaming or anything. Yeah. And, you know, he's kind of the one that, that pushed me to do it and like try it. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously shout out to your brother. I mean, that that seems to be the case for a, a good chunk of people. And I think that's, you know, not to like bring the podcast down, but there's a lot of people that, that don't have that, that envy people. Um, so it is always nice to know that, mm-hmm. you know, they're involved and that they root for you. Um, but I, I guess aside from alleviating your brother from this, you know, equation, you would kind of, you would, you would say that it's fair to say that you would kind of started from scratch. Yeah, I would say so. Like, you know, I didn't have like an audience or, you know, I don't have like a, social media following or anything that I was like, oh, hey, guys, like, I'm going to start streaming. Like, if you want to come to the streams or anything, like, it was all basically, like, 
I made like a gaming Twitter when I start, first started, like yeah. looked up like, you know, tutorials, like on everything, like how do I make emotes? How do I do all this? And like, I am cheap as fuck. Like I <laughs> don't want to spend money on like a graphic artist, to, like make me this. Like do th I was like, I'm doing everything on my own. Like I still do actually, like I make all my own like emotes. I make my own banners, like whatever. And um yeah so i like made a little um like gave me twitter and then i kind of met people through mm. twitter and that was like my first kind of group of like i guess community that yeah. i met and like played with a lot and um i joined this i don't really know like kind of like an organization um and I was, like, with them for a little while. It wasn't, like, anything, like, serious. It was just, mm -hmm. like, a group, Bro. you know, and we would um, just, like, game together and, you know, talk about whatever. And, like, we had, like, like a Discord. Um, but, yeah, I would say, like, I just found them one day randomly on Twitter, and they kind of, like, accepted me into, like, their little group, and I was like, cool. I, I like this. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's cool. And, and I just want to say this real quick for the podcast. You did freeze a little bit. It's fine. Um, but if anybody mm -hmm. got confused why, it's probably just internet stuff. I'll, I'll probably leave that in because it really wasn't a big deal. Um, uh -huh. But yeah, and I think the reason why I asked that specifically you starting from scratch is because I, I do think that's kind of important context to have in some questions that I'll ask you here in just a few. Um, so that's why I kind of wanted to ask that. So before we mm -hmm. kind of get back to, to current day JoJo and I asked you some you know advice on topics and opinions and stuff, um, the last thing I always like to kind of cover over is how you got, you know, kind of your branding name, you know, the persona that you have created that people know you as obviously Jojo Chanel technically in, in the long form, but Jojo obviously mm -hmm. is short. Um, so how did, how did that come to be? So, um, during COVID I tell myself how to sew, uh, because I was bored and I have ADHD and I love hobbies. So, um, I tell myself how to sew and I made myself a uh, mask out of a Chanel dust bag. So when I went to work, um, and we still had to wear masks, my buddy, um, super goofy kid, like crazy. Uh, I like kind of live near Philly. So like he has this like Philly like accent, Philly like um, vernacular. Yeah. And he goes, and everyone like my full name is Joel. And most people will call me like Jojo or Joe mm -hmm. or whatever. So he, I walked in one day with the, with the mask on. He goes, Oh, yo, Jojo Chanel. Like <laughs> she's in the, like this going off. And I was like, Yo, I kind of love that. Yeah. Um, well, and because before, um, before it was Jojo Chanel, my thing was not Joel. And, um, which was like another, like just was like my social media name right. for like, my entire life i don't even remember where it came from but i was like jojo chanel's way cooler yeah. and i was like so now like everybody at work like started calling me that and i was like all right i'm definitely just gonna rebrand that and it's basically been that for like like six years now wow so yeah. Yeah, I mean that's that's cool. I'm glad that you kind of have a backstory. That's it's something I bring up every time. It, you know, I say this every time because I, I know that some people may not care. Some people, you know, mm -hmm. think it's important. Like me, other people may get offended by. It. You know, I realistically, it doesn't matter if you have a backstory to your name. But that's yeah. like a personal taste for me. Is is always. I don't really care if a creator blows up and does well. I care more about like the process and like knowing that like. So and so, this is what they created. This was the backstory of why they were passionate about their name and what they do, and now they finally made it. And I'm like, I'm as, I am interested in like the middle, you know, kind of like an Oreo. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's always like my biggest things that I love being able to hear and understand. And and obviously like um like YouTube videos, like milestones and stuff, and watching those videos and watching them evolve, like. I'm not thinking at all about their numbers and their top hits and the videos that did well. I'm just thinking like, this is a creator that called himself this, this is his passion. Yeah. This was his mindset and he did it, you know? And that to me is always the coolest thing. And, and I always encourage, like I said, it, at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. 
But at the same time, when you finally get to where you want to be, because you will, if you have the motivation, no matter mm-hmm. how long it takes, you will. You know, I'll blow up. JoJo will blow up. Whoever's watching this, you can blow up. You just have to have the right intentions and want to do it. But when you get there, it'll mean so much to you that you've built something that you're passionate about rather than just a generated name of fucking Ding Dong 720. You know, yeah. like, and yeah. I just, I, I do think that that's important because, you know, None of us are going to go by our government stuff. You know, it's a persona that you're building. It's a branding that you're creating for this character that you're perceiving yourself as, you know, mine being mm-hmm. Feeds, yours technically being Jojo, even though you have some, you know, sort of resignation, but Jojo could kind of go anything like Mojo Jojo, you know, like anything, you know? Yeah. And yeah, so exactly. I think it's important that people do create some type of branding, whether it relates to them or not. I just think it just kind of adds passion into their grind. I mean, do you feel the same way? Yeah, I totally agree because um, I also, I think about that too and not only for like streamers, but like um, like music artists, like mm-hmm. especially I'm very big into like EDM, like that, like festivals, like that kind of stuff. And like some people have like, you know, most DJs don't go by their government name. They have like a DJ name or like a stage name or yeah. whatever. And like, it's the same thing, you know, it's, Sometimes it's based on like something that like they grew up with or like they liked or like it's just like a random like thing. Mm-hmm. Um, there's one DJ that we listen to a lot and they go by Vulgar. It's three guys and um, the whole thing is that it's like creepy and like Halloweeny and like scary and weird and like that's their whole like thing like their whole Mm -hmm. show like their whole their merch is like gory and creepy like their um theme yeah their visuals are like all like haunted movies like weird like scary stuff and like you don't have to do that but it's makes it like interesting and it makes people like want to like engage with it especially you know most of my stuff is like kind of like has like a little like Kirby theme it's like lighthearted. it's pink it's whimsical like I like that because I like um I want it to feel like you're like a kid like you're a kid and you're playing video games and it's Saturday morning and you're eating cereal and like you know it's it's just supposed to be like lighthearted and fun and that's the experience that I want to like give people you know, when they come to like my space. Yeah. And I like, you know, when stuff has that. It yeah. doesn't have to, but I, I feel like it, it does kind of add that creative taste to it too, because, you know, there's going to be times when you want to get into merch or a website or some type of designer mm-hmm. or something to be able to give back to your community. So, like with me, obviously, I can have, you know, my name feeds and I could have like a sniper on my back or something. Um, Mm -hmm. and just like, you know, this jersey that I'm wearing, I just wore it just because I threw it on. It was a really old team that I used to be a part of. And, and just even something simple, being able to wear a jersey and and have your name on the back. It's like, it's just, it's just a good, wholesome feeling that just makes, it just lets you know that you're kind of making an impact and making a difference. And, you know, you're going to get to a point where you get so much support from your community, regardless of your financial status, you're going to want to try to give back. And that's the perfect thing. If your name in- involves something that gives you some type of passion, throw it on a shirt, throw it on mm-hmm. a hoodie, throw it on a mug or on a sticker or something. And just there's so much little things you can do, and that will j- it'll just go such a long way. Um, yeah. But, but like I said, I, I think that it is obviously really important. And at the end of the day, you know, if you're a creator that's watching that either struggles with that or maybe you just don't care at all, like it, it really doesn't matter. But I would encourage it because I do think you know. The one of the biggest struggles us as creators go through is being proud of ourselves. We always look up to other people. We always try to find other ways, competition. Mm -hmm. What am I doing wrong? And we never focus on the things that we do and and the impact that we make. And just something simple as your name and knowing that 10 people watch your stream for that week and knowing that Mm -hmm. 10 people of that watch that because of the persona that you created that they enjoy. I mean, then that's, I mean, that's enough to be proud of alone. Um, yeah. So I, I want to talk about 
um, before I get to kind of the main topic, you know, something that you did specifically that I wanted context on that I asked earlier is you had said, you know, at, at a rough stance, you kind of started from scratch, you know, aside from your wonderful brother and your family that supported you, you know, realistically outside family stuff, you started from scratch. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of people, you know, cause you just kind of, you took a vacation, which, you know, in, in itself is kind of a break, but you kind of took a mental break on top of a vacation, if you will. Yeah, um, yeah. So my question that I have, a lot of people struggle with mental health. You know, if I leave, nobody's going to check in. My community is not going to be there. Nobody's going to care, whatever. So what advice would you give to people that really do want to take a break and that don't find it passionate, but their excuse is that nobody's going to be back there with them when they come back? So it's actually really interesting that you said that because I kind of felt that way. But I was like, I literally don't have a choice. Like, I have to take a break. Like, if I come back and no one is there or whatever, I was like, I'll just make new, make a new community. Like, I'll, there's never ending people out there that I can meet, you know. And also, if they don't reach out to you, um, even if they didn't reach out to you while you're gone, but like, you know, you say you come back or you go for a stream and they don't come back or whatever then they they didn't really care about you or to be part of your community enough yeah. where you know like yeah it's a community and like we're like friends and stuff but everyone has lives and they have other stuff going on where like maybe i I'm like oh i haven't heard from so and so in a while like you know i hope they're doing well but um i did think that way and it was funny because when i came back the one day I didn't even like playing video games yet. I kind of was like, I was like, let me go on like kick and like see who's live. Like maybe mm -hmm. I can like watch a couple like streams a little bit and like see if anyone wants to play. And I went into my friend's stream and they were streaming with like two of like my other like friends that I also knew. And I was just like, hey guys, you know, like I hope you're like doing well, whatever. And they were like, Jojo, they're like, we miss you so much. Like, I'm so happy that you're back, like, going off. And it was, like, all of them. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, you guys are so sweet. Like, it made me, like, so happy that, like, they missed me. And, like, they were happy that I was back. And they were like, we were actually just talking about you, like, the other day. Like, wondering when you were going to come back. And that was, like, just so sweet because... You don't know what is going to happen if you do take a break, but, like, that means even if it's only, you know, th a couple people, three or four people, those people are your, like, true community who, you know, will stick by you no matter what you go through or how long your break is or how many breaks you take. And then, you know, there will always be the people that don't reach out or don't, you know, say, oh, I didn't even know you were gone or whatever. But yeah. There, even if it's one person that's like, I missed you so much, like that is your true community. And like those people will shine through and they will support you till the end. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely fully agree. And I think that's it's such a big topic because I, I feel like that's everybody's mindset is they're like, I don't know if anybody will come back. And like, obviously, at the end of the day, if they don't come back, they don't come back. But Mm -hmm. I feel like I feel like that's kind of the better feeling. Like like I said, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. You just, you know, have to build another community. But being able to to be and you know, have friends that's like, oh, like I miss you or whatever, and you mm -hmm. just didn't expect to hear those words from that person. Yeah. Uh, it, it's surreal. And also before we continue, I, I scratch my nose a lot because I think it's because where I talk so much and my mustache, <laughs> it tickles me. So like <laughs> I, I promise. It's all good. Yeah, it's like, okay. My cats are running around like so itchy. crazy people I, before. It's so itchy. So. But um, <laughs> but anyways, but yeah, I I do think that that's that's a big factor for people. And mm -hmm. before I kind of get on to my other question, I, I did want to kind of touch base and, and get your, I guess, kind of elaborate more on this. So you had said, if I come back to my streams and my compute in in my community, and if nobody's there for me, I'll just build another community. I don't feel like I've ever heard anybody say that sentence. I feel like everybody has always been like, oh, like if other people aren't there, like I just, I'll figure it out from there or I don't know what to do. And I don't feel like I've ever heard anybody have that drive and motivation be like, you know what, if it didn't happen for me before, maybe mm -hmm. this is just a fresh start. Um, so, you know, kind of give me an, an elaboration of how 
you know, you can build something for months and then leave. And the first thought you have is if they don't show up, I'll just start over again. So two, I have two things to say about that. One is I did it before. So like I was saying, like earlier when I started streaming in 2020, um, you know, I had like a little like baby community. Like I am, you know, still small, but I had like my little group and I stopped streaming for like two years. Like at one point, I don't think I turned on my computer for like six months. And um, eventually, like, you know, you like kind of stop talking to them, like yeah. people that are, you know, because I'm not gaming, whatever. Um, and then when I decided to start streaming again, I I made another community. Like it's it's hard. It's a lot of work. It's scary to start something new or whatever. But like it's possible and like yeah it's small but it's not impossible it's like it's not the end of the world if if you know you have to start over again and um also like i kind of like did it in like my life so i worked at this job for four years like i was loyal to this job like i loved it there all of my friends were there like i it was i almost like owned the place literally and at one point i got so tired of it because they were just like treating me like crap and it was i was just so over it i was like i'm just gonna get a new job like because i am a bartender like i can really realistically work anywhere so one day i was like uh i don't want to work here anymore and i quit and then went to a different restaurant and you know starting anything new especially a job is scary and you don't know anybody um you you don't know your managers you don't know the customers and when i started there i was like oh like i don't know like i hope like i made the right decision and like blah 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 and then i've been there for over a year now and like that's my new like community like those are my new like close friends like especially like for if you've worked in a restaurant before, like mm-hmm. you understand, like the closeness that like you make yeah. is different than like an office job. But like Definitely. besides the point, um, and like that's my new like community. Those are my new friends. Like I see them more than my siblings sometimes. Like it's scary to start over, but it's not impossible. And sometimes it's better. Like. I'm so much happier now, you know, at this job with these friends than I was at my old job. And I'm happier now, you know, that I'm streaming on kick and I am met these people on like this platform and than I was, you know, in 2020. So it's not impossible. It just does take some work yeah. if you want to put the work in. Yeah, I mean, I, I fully agree, and I think that it, it's it's good because it kind of it's it creates milestones for you, not only to look back on, but let's say you get some type of business opportunity or somebody reaches out to you or whatever, and like, hey, like JoJo, I've been tapping into your stuff, like, just kind of tell us more about you, and, and like, you have that leniency and that pride to say, well, this is my third go round. You know, I started mm-hmm. before, didn't know what I was doing. The second time I was started, I'm in a bad, bad mindset, didn't want to perceive this. And now I, I'm right where I want to be. And it sets the tone for businesses, for viewers watching, for yourself or, or for anybody mm-hmm. else that connects with you. And it, it shows you that you have failed and you're OK with failing. And I think that's one of the biggest things that creators struggle with is how to fail and how to how to bounce back and how to understand that you're not good enough or how to tell yourself that you know what you're capable of, but you're not providing what you know you're capable of. And I feel like that's Mm -hmm. something that everybody struggles with and there's not really a clear answer out there. But at the end of the day, it's just the old common saying, you know, if you don't do something about it and if you don't change your motivation and if you don't wake up one day and look in the mirror and say, I need to do something, I am not where I want to be nobody's going to come in your life and give you that chance. Just like we was talking about super earlier about, you know, that one person that can change your life. Like, Mm -hmm. yeah, they definitely can. But until you wake up one day and say, 
I want to do something different, just like me with my podcast. I decided to stop gaming, stop playing Valorant, stop doing ranked and stuff, mm-hmm. and pursue these podcasts because it's what I want to do and wherever it takes me, it'll take me. But until you make that change, not only will you never be happy, but you're never going to hit the goals that you want to hit. Sorry, I you're thought fine. my cat got into something. No, you're um, fine. No, but yeah, I totally, totally agree, especially about like the failing part. And I think that's a lot of people's fear in anything. You know, they don't, it's, it's embarrassing to fail, not to other people, but like to yourself the most because no one is thinking about you, what you can't do. Only, you know, they're only seeing what you're, what you're doing. And if I'm seeing that, you know, you're making content and you're editing those videos and you're doing this and that, like, I'm only seeing you work. Yeah. I'm not, like, in your brain, like, oh, like, my video didn't get 10,000 views. Like, that video is terrible. I saw that your video got 1,000 views and I'm like, wow, that's me. Like, my videos don't get 1,000 views. Yeah. Like, then I'm thinking about, like, you know, like, only you are thinking about what you didn't achieve in your brain and you can either take it in a direction where you're like man i suck and this isn't for me or the other way around when you're like man i just have to do something different like what you did like you know live streaming is oversaturated with gamers especially in valorant or call of duty or overwatch or like those style of games where like podcasts and that style are not oversaturated and like people are interested in that right now and to mesh two of those things like together is smart like it's it's a great idea i think at the end of the day you you have to be your own hype man absolutely 100 percent yeah. Um, so before we kind of wrap things up here, I do want to ask uh, one more question um, for my mm-hmm. ladies out there, um, for all my wonderful ladies that, that tune in and watch and the previous ones that have been on. I always like to have a small section for them. Um, I know that, you know, you guys obviously struggle with a lot and, and I am nothing to preach on that. And I say this all the time because I, I know how gaming is perceived and the battles that you guys go through is, is nothing that I could imagine. And it's, it's just so stupid that it's even a thing. Everybody should be normalized and equalized. Um, Mm -hmm. so on that topic, you know, for the ladies out there that are going through stuff or maybe that's just watching in general. Um, a lot of them obviously struggle with going live, being on camera, struggling with the battles of what people are going to say, you know, all the dumb hate stuff, or maybe they're just not feeling it. They have trouble connecting with friends, um, and, and networking. So, you know, as you know, I don't like saying it this way, but like I said, that's kind of what the, what the environment is normalized. You know, as a mm-hmm. woman in gaming, what advice would you have to new or old streamers that still kind of get nervous going live and making friends? What advice would you give them to try to step out of their comfort zone and be the creator they want to be? So I would say my biggest advice is don't let voices on the internet dictate how you feel about yourself and what you make because and I say that I am I have thick skin like I have I was bullied my entire life I am a girl gamer since I was young like I've heard every single insult in the book I've heard you know you know the how much do you weigh like go make me a sandwich like that's like it's not even like a good a good comeback anymore it's like i'm like come up with a better one man like to me i i tell myself i'm like they're a random person on the internet i am never gonna meet this person in my life they probably are just doing this to make themselves laugh or make their buddies laugh or because they're bored or this and that like I, like, don't take it personally because they're probably going to say that to the next girl that they hear on the next match. Like, it's so, in like, what is that? What is the word I'm looking for? Um, insignificant. Or, like, I don't even remember what 
someone said to me at the last game because someone probably said something to me but like it doesn't matter like they you're never going to meet that person that person has no impact no influence on your life they are just a random ass person on the internet and that's what i tell everybody i'm like just ignore them you could just mute them and then you don't even have to hear it at all and like then they just have to deal with themselves and they probably have so many other issues in their life and they'll probably never be married and have a happy life anyway because they have so much negativity <laughs> so um, to to kind of flip that to add on um another question to that from a, a mm. different perspective what about for the ones that struggle you know they they want to start streaming but they don't have the people to play with or they don't have you know, people to be the backbone for them if they get into an argument because a lot of them, you know, social anxiety and stuff mm-hmm. like that. So what advice Absolutely. What advice would you give to, to the ladies out there that struggle making friends or they're too shy or, oh, what if she mm-hmm. says what if she says no to me or what if I start some drama that I, I didn't comprehend would happen? You know, what advice would you give them? So I would say just keep, you'll find where you fit. Of, of at one point and that goes for gaming and that goes for life and anything where you know you're not gonna get along with everybody um you know maybe someone might like you but you just don't really like their energy or the other way around like as long as you keep trying to like just keep going on and entering new spaces and trying to just be comfortable with yourself and be positive you'll find people that are like you and give out the same energy that you have and you'll connect with them. And sometimes like I don't have people to play with. And like a lot of people I do play with like are men because, you know, men are very much into shooters. Um, And I'm like, sometimes I just want to like play with some ladies and um, sometimes you can some, you know, you'll meet like a random girl and then like she'll have like a couple more girlfriends to play with and you kind of all like form your little like girl group and yeah that's kind of my only thing like you just have to keep searching and you'll even if you have one one you'll maybe they have one and then that girl has two and Mm kind of keep on going on Mm -hmm. well i appreciate your advice and your opinions on that and i hope for Anybody watching um, that that is struggling with anything, whether you're you know a woman in gaming or you know struggling with mental health or or men, you know even men that have problems networking Absolutely. and stuff, um, you know everybody matters. Everybody matters at the end of the day. Everybody has their own struggles and their own battles. And just kind of like I said at the beginning of this podcast, you know, like you don't owe anything to anybody. But at the same time, if you want to succeed, you have to start the process. It's it's a two way mm-hmm. street. You can't just pretend that things are going to work out how they do. And you have to acknowledge that you have to put in the effort to get the results. But at the mm. same time, your feelings are always validated. And I, I think that's kind of one of the very last questions. I guess I'll ask you to, to end off on that before we wrap up here. Um, okay. is, is it important to reach out? Like, in what way? Like, like, like if you're going through things if you're and not, you need if you're somebody going to talk through, okay. to, right. Yeah, Absolutely. So I actually have a degree in psychology um, when I went to school, I graduated my bachelor's um, and I wanted to be a therapist. So obviously mental health is very important on my list and I'm very well educated in that. And people always say like, oh, you know, and even just talking generally about if you were going to go to therapy or whatever, not even about reaching out, but like people always say like, you know, I don't need therapy or I don't need to talk to anybody. And even if you don't want to talk to like a professional, like there are studies that show like just talking to like your friends is is better than sulking by yourself and locking yourself away and being on your phone, you know, not kind of going through these problems because it like humans need connection, even like physical connection like holding someone's hand giving someone a hug can change like your brain chemistry like so you people need human connection like you cannot be by yourself and reaching out to others like whether it be on the internet you know your internet friends or your real life friends like your mom your dad 
like that can really like save your life and it makes a big difference and also not only reaching out to people going um i actually just wrote a paper about this a couple uh like last year um going out into nature can drastically improve your mental health um that's why like places that um are the like cities are more walkable like they have sidewalks there's trees there's flower beds people that live in those kinds of places are healthier not only physically but mentally because they can go out and they can breathe that fresh air and they can meet up with their friends and they can have lunch or they can go on a walk and it's not impossible to get to the grocery store or like it's not impossible to walk down the street to your friend's house and <clears throat> it's just like that human connection and nature and all that stuff like can really save your life honestly like it's it's not look frowned upon or it doesn't make you less manly to reach out for human connection or help or anything like it's it really can save your life and i'm a very big advocate on talking about how you're feeling and yeah. taking breaks and all that stuff yeah definitely and i appreciate your opinions and stuff and, and sharing that with anybody listening here today and, and yeah mm-hmm. definitely um, especially for men, obviously, because men, yep. at, at some to some extent, and I'm sure studies, you know, go through way more than you know anybody else, just because we're, you know, that's <clears throat> that's kind of how we're built, you know, not talking about things, mm-hmm. doing it, getting over with it, and, you know, and that's kind of not really, you know, I am a big advocate. I always want people to normalize their feelings. It's okay to cry, you know, it's okay to talk mm-hmm. about these things and stuff, and you don't have to worry about how you're perceived, but my my specific mindset is, is formulated differently and, and I guess like personally because I don't really complain about things because it's not that I I don't bottle them up inside. I just see the world for what it is. And so if I know that something needs to get done, then I'll do it regardless of the in-between and the conversation and whatever arguments that happen. But if I'm in a situation where like there's nothing I can do about it, then that's when I'll like, you know, show my emotions and talk about it and get my feels mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, and I, I definitely don't think that's something that's normalized at all. So I, um, I do appreciate, you know, you bringing uh, that up and, and hopefully maybe that <laughs> resonates with somebody. Maybe somebody mm-hmm. heard that and they're like, you know, what? maybe I do know, need to go and just take a trip for the weekend in the woods, mm-hmm. and make a campfire or something, you know, like Absolutely. What, whatever they need to do. And I apologize. Mm-hmm. I, should, I probably should have worded that question a little bit better. I apologize for the confusion. No, no, um, it's okay. But yeah, so I do hope that that, uh, that helps somebody uh, in anything yeah, that's happened, you know, within I do this too. podcast. Absolutely. Um, well, Jojo, I obviously appreciate your time for being able to come here today. Um, very last question that I want to ask you, is there anything that you have coming up that you're excited to share with anybody? Um, I am just excited to, you know, get back to everything and get back to playing with my friends, you know, um, being on a actual stream schedule and coming back from my break, um, making more short form content and go back to making more tiktoks and all that good stuff and you know try to be a lot more consistent in my streaming career and just having fun and not burning myself out like i did the last time yeah definitely you know i I, you know and i'm proud of you for that to be able to go through that and to come back with with a new mindset and i know that question is a little bit harder for you because you're just now kind of coming mm-hmm. into this and, and you are trying to figure out what exact goals that you are. I mean, it's a, it's a learning phase, but I think that's kind of the, the thing that I want to highlight is, you know, if Jojo can restart three times, you can restart three times. Like absolutely it, just because it doesn't work yeah. out now does not mean it can't work out um, later. And this is not me promoting kick at all. You can have mm-hmm. your own opinions that you want, but if you did have, you know, an itch to want to try out kick and stuff, now is a perfect time. Now is a perfect time yeah. to restart and, and grow your community again. And if you don't, mm-hmm. Twitch is always a great time. Or you can get on Rumble. You can go Rumble, Rumble, yeah. or Facebook, or YouTube, whatever. <laughs> yeah, you know, anywhere. There's, there's a lot yeah. of, of cool factors that you can get into. And just think outside the box and, and just try to be perceived as somebody you would want to watch. And that's mm-hmm. that's all. And I, I think that's kind of the the most important thing that you can do for yourself is if you're not feeling it, not only in your stream, 
because you know to not let people have to watch that if that's not what you want them to watch if that's not what your content's about if you're not feeling it but go back and watch like 10 minutes of it and just think am i doing what i want to do like morally and my intentions and my goals and that's that is the ultimate tool to use for yourself to understand where you're messing up and what you can go off of and if you just try to live to fight another day and you just say well i'll go live tomorrow and see what happens you're gonna go through the same old nightmare mm-hmm. you just went through um so yeah i think it's it's just it's so important that people talk about their feelings they open up and they also mm-hmm. realize that they're you know everybody is fighting for that big break but it still takes you to get to that big break um yep. So before we end off everything, JoJo, is there any last words that you want to say to anybody that's listening here today? I want to say, don't be afraid to start. Don't listen to what random people on the internet have to say about you, especially when it's a negative. And don't be afraid to talk about your feelings. Definitely. Well, Jojo, I really appreciate your time being able to sit here for the past hour that we've done this for and yeah. and have this conversation. It's been a blast, and I really appreciate your time. Absolutely. I had so much fun. Yeah. I feel like cool. I don't, you know, you don't usually get those questions asked to you on yeah. a daily basis. So I did. Yeah. I'm glad. So, yeah. It. Anybody that's watching, I hope you guys enjoyed. This has been episode 30 with the wonderful lady, Jojo. Um, hope you guys have enjoyed. Um, her Twitter is right below her face. Her links and everything is in the description below. Go check her out. Um, show her up. Um, it, this may actually go live pretty decent or like be posted a little bit after she's live. Um, so if you end up watching this in the next couple Ooh. hours, um, then go check her out. Um, she will be live streaming directly after this podcast if it makes it out that far. Um, but yeah, it's been episode 30. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. This is Feeds Mindset. My name is Feeds, and I'm out, guys.